since your last play? Does it feel like forever to you and do you feel like they're ready to get back into it? Yeah, I think we are certainly at that point where we're looking forward to playing. At the front end of the three weeks, it seems like it's going to take forever. And now this week's come around. I think our guys have done a great job of getting dialed in for the moment. You can see this week down to the energy lift and the intensity lift amongst the, as, as it's got closer and closer. Do you yep. sense that they are peaking at the right time in terms of their energy and intensity and how you've timed it? You, you hope so. Uh, you know, uh, the three weeks has been a learning curve for me how to deal with this. Uh, to expect that over the three weeks, I think, is a tough ask. So I do like how it's been gradually building. It's funny, yesterday, Jordan Usher was chatting to the group and the was up and seemed really up. Like, are they antsy about not playing, ready to have, to have an opposition ready to go at? I, I think when you get to the playoffs, uh, when you see other teams play and you're not playing, the, the urgency uh, and just the thrill of wanting to get out there and play starts to really eat at you. And I think you, you've just seen that over the last couple of days. And, uh, you know, we're pretty close to finally playing. Do you watch the Melbourne game this summer? Like, as a team, do you encourage them to watch it? Do you not watch it? What do you do? That's an individual preference. I want them to be worried about Tassie and ready to go tomorrow night. Do you watch it? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> now that you're at the end of this three, longer than three week, sort of lead into the final, uh, what have you made of it? Would you like, are you happy with it or would you like to see it maybe changed for next year? Have you, I know you've approached it steady, but um, what have you made of that sort of long lead into this one? I'll let you know after we've played. What do you expect from the Jack Jumpers? Oh, look, <laughs> they're, they're a formidable outfit. They're playing well at this time of the year. Uh, if I believe all the media experts, they've got this great team. So. Uh, we've been preparing to play a great team that has great success, so uh, we'll have to see if we're ready. I'm more of an expert than any of us, or any of the media out there. Like, what do you make of Tassie? Like, how have you seen throughout the year, and what's the key to beating them? Yeah, look, the key, key to beating them is uh, being smart in your approach. Like, they prey on your mistakes. So we need to be disciplined, we need to be just smart with our approach. And over the last week, the way we've dialed into the, our game plan has been very good. Now, the execution, when there's fans in the stands in the moment, we need to ex keep executing at the level we have over the last couple of days. Where do you feel you have the biggest edge going into the game? Uh, Bryce Cotton. So Bryce is obviously loves this time of season. His history is, is quite amazing. Mm -hmm. Do you see a different Bryce now to what you see during the during the year, does he change it when you look at him in terms of how he prepares for Look, he, he for sure does, but then we have a bunch of guys that are very prideful. Uh, and I can go down the list. You talked to Hiram Harris yesterday. It's the first time he made the playoffs. So he has a nice edge about being here for the first time. Doolittle's won and been successful throughout his career. Corey Webster, Jesse. Ty Webster's trying to probably nullify the perception of him as a player and as a person. So these are the stages that allow guys to change their course in history. You mentioned the fans just then. Does playing at home tomorrow night make you feel a little at ease knowing that the Wildcats at home or is it a hard outfit to be? It, it's great that we get to play at home. I, I think that gets our guys energised and you put in all the stuff that we've dealt with being off for three weeks, being in a familiar surrounding, I think, is an advantage. And we, we should feel very comfortable going into our environment, for sure. Scott Roth made some comments on radio the other day about Bryce being a protected species. Yep. Do you have any reaction to that? That's the beauty of numbers. You can manipulate them to however you want. I would say I'm under the microscope. I, it seems like I play Bryce the most minutes in the world. So for him to get to the free throw line the most, to also go on with I run every play for Bryce. So he's going to get that. So you can talk about the numbers however you want. So I know he has his way. I'm obviously going to predict my way. But then the other thing, you listen to the experts. Milton Doyle, MVP candidate. Jordan Crawford, MVP candidate. Jack McVeigh, all NBL. Will Magne, all world right now. It's Bryce and the heartbeats out there trying to make it happen. So we'll go out there, we'll play, and we'll see what happens. Some would suggest that he's not protected, I guess, over here. Some would suggest that he doesn't get enough 
Yeah, I commented on that weeks ago, and we'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. externally. Yep. Is this a chance for this group to make a statement about how good they genuinely are? Ab absolutely. This is the greatest stage to make a statement. You know, like, I listen to these guys, these experts. It's like a rec league team playing the All-Stars, you know? Great stage for us to go out there and prove who we are and what we're about. Do you use that with this group? Do you hope to develop in them and get, them, get that chip on their shoulder if they play so well? I think our guys have enough chips on their shoulders. They've done a great job with that this year. Um, and the, the one thing that they've certainly done is push their own self-gratification and awards to the side. Like they've had disappointment for not being in the running, but like our, t our team goal is to be successful as a team because then you will get truly ultimately rewarded. Are you confident that when Bryson probably does cop that extra attention that the guys around him can stand up for these big games? I believe we're the only team to win six games in a row in the competition. Bryce was playing at a great level, but he also has some great teammates. Like Keanu Pinder, if you want to delve into the numbers, like he had maybe his most efficient year of, the, of his career. He never gets mentioned in any of this stuff. So he's another one that can go out there and prove what he's about. And out, like you guys saw it today, like our guys have a nice edge. We could go out tomorrow and lay an egg, but we're ready to step up and take the challenge. And on Bryce, how company is it for you to know, you know exactly what you're Like there's some folks in sport, you don't know what you're going to get to the mm -hmm. finals. You know he's going to be elite. No matter how confident yeah. is it from a coaching perspective to know your superstar is going to be a certain like, Bryce is a comfort blanket for me, there's no doubt about it. But then you got Jesse Wagstaff. Everyone forgets about Corey Webster. Jordan Usher has proven that he has game-winning moments. I stand here confident with our group. We're at the pointy end of the season. There's going to be a winner and a loser, but I like the guys that I go to battle with. Is there a bit, bit of a positive spin on the fact that there's so much attention from the media or outside given to Bryce? that it just sort of lets your other stars do their thing and let their basketball move to a ab Absolutely, and that's where as a team behind closed doors, they've, they enjoy being around each other. Like they truly do, and they want to see everyone successful. The biggest, the biggest encouragement for that is Alex Saar. Like here's someone that's been touted as a potential top three pick. You come into our practices, like our guys embrace and want that guy, kid to be successful. I don't think that happens all the time. I don't think that happens all the time here with Next Stars. So I think that's as much as it's a compliment to Alex and his family, it's his teammates as well that have embraced that. And they embrace each other with their warts and all. And I told him yesterday, I love your warts. That's what makes sport beautiful. Is Tasmania Jack Jumpers, they have their style of play. We have our style of play. Let's see what happens. Yep, no worries. Thanks. Thank you.